I achieved A first in my master's dissertation and in fact my examiner said that it was one of the highest grades that he had awarded that academic year. And there are five main things I did to be able to achieve that from the beginning where it comes to choosing a topic right to the end to proofreading and submitting. And in today's video I'm going to be speaking about how I achieved a first and how you can also achieve a first in your dissertation that I know is due very soon using both traditional and AI tools. The first thing is that you need to make sure that your topic is both original and also relevant. One of the main concerns that students have when it comes to dissertations is that you are not keeping your topic as kind of narrow as possible. I had a meeting uh, just this week with someone and one of the reasons why her dissertation topic was rejected is because it was really broad and quite general. This is already leading you to fail as you're not making sure that your topic is niche and is kind of targeting a very small area. It needs to fill a gap in the existing literature and also offer an opportunity for you to write about something and discuss a particular topic. And for this, you need to do lots of reading, lots of research, lots of reading within your uh, research area to try to really refine your research question. And at this stage, I would also really highly recommend to speak to your supervisor or consult someone who can actually help you before you go on and continue with your dissertation. This is a big, again, a really big mistake that people do and when it comes to writing they just pick a topic start to write write a whole chunk and then later on get told that oh it's not narrow enough why did you wait until that point a bit earlier on once you've figured out what your topic is you've written a bit of a title you can then present this to someone who is has the experience and has the expertise and can support you and kind of ensure that you are on the right track because whether you like it or not, the topic you choose and the title you choose can completely determine how easy your dissertation is to write and actually kind of the highest grade that you can get. The second thing you need to do is develop a comprehensive research plan. Now this is a, a research plan that is going to detail exactly what you are going to do to be able to achieve your results and the discussion and the conclusion later on. So this could include if you're doing a literature based dissertation, this could include sort of how much detail you're going to go into for your literature search, uh, what your parameters are, where you're doing your search and things like that. And if it's actually research where you are going ahead and conducting some research, then this is again needs to include the methods and materials materials, sort of the participants, the inclusion criteria, the exclusion criteria, and all the detail needs to be there before you even begin. And on top of that, you need a really clear research plan itself in terms of the timeline. What are you doing first? What are you doing second? What is the third step? When is your deadline? How much time do you have? It is now uh, the beginning of April, which means most of you probably have a month or two months to submit your dissertation. So try to plan it out based off the time. This week, I'm going to achieve what? Next next week I'm going to achieve what? The third week, the ne that's the next step. Try to book in some meetings with your supervisor or your professor where you kind of try to catch up and ensure that you have this deadline that you can try to meet. A, a massive, massive issue is if you're not setting yourself some internal deadlines, you kind of just lose track of time and it means that you end up two, three months down the line, weeks down the line, you haven't actually got anything done and before you know it, you're short of time. I was really heavy on keeping a really tight schedule and I think this is one of the main reasons why I had a really strong dissertation because of just maintaining my focus and getting things done um, within an order um, and within a schedule. The third thing is that you need to ensure that you are conducting a really thorough literature review. You need to also ensure that you're being critical as well when you read and you look at the literature. Now one thing about writing a dissertation is that it's not just a matter of reading and just mentioning what you've read. You actually need to go beyond that otherwise it's just a review paper. You need to actually be critical. So you're reading these papers, you're bringing the information together and what are you bringing out? What is the output? How are you going to um, add to what you've read? How are you going to comment on what you've read? How are you bringing your own sort of original thoughts into what you've read? If you don't do those things, you probably will just hit a 40% or 50%, you definitely won't get a first. And that is one of the key determinants and the key differentiating points between someone who's getting a first and someone who's not. You need to do things like identifying the gaps in knowledge from the research that you've read, identifying sort of any limitations from the methodology. You need to really analyze the literature and really think about how it fits into the gap that you are trying to fill with your dissertation. And what this does is it really demonstrates your understanding in the research area. If you're able to go into that depth slightly, then you are able to show that you are an expert in what you've read and an expert in what you've written. The fourth thing, and I think this is probably a really obvious one, is to write clearly, coherently and concisely. To be able to do this, 
You need to first ensure that your structure is strong. Start with a good introduction, bulk up your paragraphs, have a really organized paragraph, um, have subsections if you want, subchapters, and a really strong conclusion. Have a good structure that you've planned out beforehand so when you're writing, it just flows. And the second part of that is the actual academic language itself. It should be formatted accurately, there should be really good transitions between different paragraphs, um, but the one thing that you can do to help through this is to use an AI which is called Jenny.ai. And I have mentioned Jenny on this channel previously. Jenny is an AI powered writing tool that is your writing assistant. It uses AI technology to formulate the next best sentence based on what is already written. And Jenny can really help you take your work to the next level and really supercharge getting from a very rough draft to a polished final draft. When you've begun to write and you want to get to that editing stage to polish your text, Jenny AI is an amazing tool. So let's take a look at what the different commands are. So you can highlight a bit of text as you can see here, and then you can check and you can improve fluency. So that means making it sound more academic and making it sound a lot clearer. You can paraphrase it. So changing um, what you've said in a slightly different way. You can simplify it, so cutting out some text. You can also make it sound a little bit longer. So that just means expanding the text a little bit, translate into different languages. You can summarize writing into an opposing argument or even writing with a little bit more depth and also writing um, strong conclusions. So let's take a look at the first one, which is paraphrasing it and seeing if we can paraphrase it to make it sound a bit more academic. Now you can see what the um, results are and you can input this automatically into your text. So this does a really quick job for you. You're able to very easily determine um, sort of what mistakes you have and you can make those changes um, and, and kind of go, go ahead like that. You can also look at document settings. So change the language, the, the kind of citation style um, and other features that mean that you are sticking to your particular formatting requirements by your university. So the second thing that I am going to try is I want to say, can you please continue writing? There may be a time where you've written quite a bit and you just think, how could I expand on this? What more could I add? And here Jenny can help you. Um, again, as I've said in many of my videos in the past, you don't want to just copy and paste here. What you want to do is give this as an initial start point and it's a starting point from where you can build on it's a starting point from where you can maybe think about new ideas where you can think about new ways to say things remember that you're also learning jenny is teaching you how to write academically what good academic writing actually looks like so it's not just a matter of asking jenny to give you text and copying that but actually looking at how it's been written and try to pull out some of those features for yourself so this is the second way that um, you can use it. The third way is regarding the citations. So here I want to add a citation so I can just very easily go to my library or I can go and discover some new research papers that are very relevant to what I've been saying. So I can go and very quickly and easily add a new paper and I can make sure that the setting is for Harvard, which was my particular format. And I can very easily change this as well. And then I can just do a double check to make sure that my spelling, my grammar and punctuation is all correct. And the last way that I want to show you today is using the Ask Jenny tool. Now in the Ask Jenny tool, I've asked, can I strengthen my introduction any, you know, in any way? I think I've done a good job, but I want a little bit of feedback on how to improve it. And you can see that it's given me an amazing list of ways to improve my introduction using kind of a way to teach you is teaching you jenny is teaching you how to improve your introduction and then i've actually asked can you give me an effective way can you actually give me um, some tips and an example for how to improve the introduction and this is what i absolutely love i love that it has actually given me an example that is re related and kind of relevant for my work so there's actually an example sentence that incorporates the kind of proteins and the names and the words that I've been using so it's showing me how I could do this in a good way and I actually I absolutely love this I think this is so unique um, and it's a great way to use Jenny so that those are three ways that I've just described on how to use Jenny to help you improve your writing your clarity and your cohesion when you're doing your academic writing. And the last uh, tip that I'd give you to aim for first is to demonstrate really strong analytical and critical skills. You need to show that you have researched robust methodologies, you are aware of limitations, you are aware of different theories that guide the research, you are aware of, of just every aspect and you're able to interpret your findings critically. And this is where the discussion and the results are really important for your kind of aiming for those top grades. I always say that the most important 
aspect of a dissertation is the discussion and the conclusion. People tend to think it's the introduction, the lit review, the methods. Those, those things are good, but where your examiner is really looking and where they're hoping to see something innovative and something transformative is where is the discussion. That is where you're bringing everything together and you're finalizing this piece of work. So take time to think about that. Take time to think about your research skills. Take time to think about sort of what you're bringing onto the table when you're writing a discussion. And for this, evidence needs to be used really effectively. The research that you've read, all the papers that you've brought together, you need to use those papers effectively to tell a strong story and support your arguments and your conclusions. So those are the five characteristics of a, a first class dissertation that I did uphold every single time I wrote a dissertation, which was twice. <laughs> um, and I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you did enjoy it, then do let me know what more you want to see from me. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below and a thumbs up. And as I mentioned, feel free to check my link in the description down below to try Jenny. And I also have a code that you can use, which I'll leave over here. And it's Amina20, and that you can go and check it out and try it for yourself. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.